Want to train your technicians and engineers in industrial automation? We offer several specialized courses perfect for your team's development. Visit realpars.com business. Fill out the form, and our team will quickly contact you to enhance your team's skills. Here's a scenario that plays out every day in a process control environment. A situation suggests that there may be a problem with an I.O. device, a PLC module, or the PLC program itself. This video will discuss how to attack a problem like this. We will look at how to interpret PLC LED status indicators for digital inputs and outputs, and how to perform troubleshooting tests using a digital multimeter. PLC programs rarely cause failures, so in this video, we'll assume that there are no program errors and that the fault originates in the physical I.O. devices or a PLC I.O. module. Having said that, we use the PLC program as a troubleshooting tool. Field devices, such as sensors and actuators, are by far the most common cause of failures accounting for as much as 75% of all failures. Faulty PLC I.O. modules often cause the remaining 25% of failures. Before we proceed, let's discuss the differences between digital and analog I.O. and their expected electrical characteristics. A digital signal has only two conditions, voltage on or off. The voltage state at a digital PLC input can represent the condition of a physical device, such as a proximity sensor or a push button. The voltage state at a digital PLC output can represent the desired condition of an output device, such as a relay or a lamp. The analog part is not so easy, as there are infinite possible conditions. Analog voltage or current signals represent input process variables, such as pressure and temperature. Analog voltage and current are also used to control output devices, such as valves or dampers. Two very common analog signal ranges are 1 to 5 volts and 4 to 20 milliamps. Okay, let's start with an input circuit containing a PBNC, or push button normally closed, switch, connected to an input of an Allen Bradley 1756-IB16 syncing digital input module. If you want to know more about syncing and sourcing PLC input modules, I recommend the course PLC Hardware Fundamentals, Power, I.O. Modules, and Signals. This course will teach you about PLC I.O. modules, simplifying the concepts behind module operation and current direction. We know it's a PBNC switch because we have an excellent set of wiring drawings showing how the field devices are wired to the PLC modules. Up-to-date drawings are essential to any troubleshooting activity. Let's peek at the ladder logic program to find where the condition of this PBNC switch is utilized. As we can see, the condition of the PBNC switch determines the state of the first normally open contact on rung zero of the ladder logic program. Here's a tip for you. A rookie mistake is to falsely assume that the PLC ladder logic symbol always matches the associated physical field device. That is not true. Our example has a normally closed field device and is associated with a normally open logic symbol on the ladder diagram. Programmers choose logic symbols based on the overall logic requirements of the program. All right, let's do some troubleshooting. The first step in determining the source of any fault is understanding how the circuit operates normally and how it operates differently in the faulty condition. The 1756-IB16 digital input module's LED input indicator panel is a powerful troubleshooting tool. It tells us whether each input is in a voltage on or voltage off condition. In our example, under normal conditions, the LED1 should be on due to the condition of the stop underscore PB underscore NC switch. The normally open logic symbol stop underscore PB underscore NC will be true, as shown by the green shading. A DMM set as a voltmeter connected to terminal 1 of the module 
will measure plus 24 volts DC. Let's look at a fault condition example. We observe that the indicator LED1 is off, and the normally open contact logic symbol, stop underscore PB underscore NC, is false, while it should be true. The next step is to list the possible fault causes. The defective components could be the field device switch, stop underscore PB underscore NC, or the 24 volts DC power supply, or the PLC input module, or there may be a broken wire. Now, it's time to make some measurements with the digital multimeter, or DMM. Here's another tip for you. Don't take any measurements if you don't know what you expect. Each measurement should lead to the subsequent measurement. Taking random measurements serves no purpose but to confuse you. Let's place the DMM set as a voltmeter at terminal 1 of the PLC input module. If the voltmeter reads plus 24 volts DC, there are no broken wires, and the switch and power supply are working correctly. The suspected fault is the module. If the voltmeter reads 0 volts DC, that explains why the LED1 is off. We might have a defective switch, power supply, or a broken wire. The next step is to move the voltmeter's red lead to the switch's module side. If the voltmeter reads plus 24 volts DC, there is likely a broken wire between the switch and terminal 1 of the input module. If the voltmeter reads 0 volts DC, it could be a defective switch or power supply. The next step is to move the voltmeter red lead to the power supply side of the switch. If the voltmeter reads plus 24 volts DC, the power supply is fine, but the switch is likely defective. At this stage, you could test the switch with an ohmmeter, but based on the voltage measurements, that test is not necessary. Okay, let's move on to the PLC's output side. We will connect a lamp to the output of an Allen Bradley 1756-OB16D digital sourcing output module. A fuse protects the module from overload. This output module type has a semiconductor output switch and can only handle a low current up to a maximum of 2 amps. An interposing relay is often used to operate high current loads, such as motors. If you want to know more about the syncing and sourcing PLC output module, I recommend the course PLC Hardware Fundamentals Power, I.O. Modules, and signals. Again, we rely on up-to-date drawings to verify wiring connections. Let's peek at the ladder logic program to see how the lamp is turned on. The state of the lamp coil symbol on rung 0 determines the condition of the lamp connected to the output module. The 1756-OB16 digital output module has LED indicators to tell whether each output supplies voltage to energize the load. So, under normal conditions, the LED0 and the lamp should be on, due to the true condition of the program's lamp coil symbol on rung 0. Let's look at an example of a fault condition. We observe that the indicator LED0 is on, but the lamp is off when it should be on. The next step is to list the possible fault causes. The defective components could be the fuse, the lamp, or the 24 volts DC power supply, or there might be a broken wire. Now, it's time to make some measurements with the digital multimeter, or DMM. We'll start by placing the voltmeter between the fuse and the lamp. Remember what we said earlier. Don't make any measurements if you don't know what you expect. Each measurement should lead to the subsequent measurement. Taking random measurements serves no purpose but to confuse you. If the voltmeter reads 0 volts, the fault is likely an open fuse. A broken wire on the output module side of the fuse may be the cause, but it is unlikely. If the voltmeter reads 24 volts DC, the fault could be a defective lamp, 
a broken wire, or a corroded ground connection. This might seem odd, but the next step is to move the voltmeter's red lead to the lamp's ground side. If the voltmeter reads 24 volts DC, the lamp is fine, and the fault is either a broken wire between the lamp and the ground, or a corroded ground connection. If the voltmeter reads 0 volts DC, the lamp is defective. Okay, let's summarize what we've discussed. PLC programs rarely are the cause of failures. Field devices, such as sensors and actuators, are the most common cause of failures, followed by faulty PLC I.O. modules. Up-to-date drawings are essential to any testing and troubleshooting activities. PLC ladder logic symbols don't always match the associated physical field device. Input and output module LED indicator panels are a powerful troubleshooting tool. Don't take any measurements if you don't know what you expect. And taking random measurements serves no purpose. If you're a plant manager looking to train your maintenance team, visit realpars.com business. Just add your contact information and our team will quickly reach out to discuss how we can support your team's development. As mentioned earlier, if you're interested in learning more about syncing and sourcing PLC input and output modules, I recommend checking out the course PLC Hardware Fundamentals, Power, I.O. Modules, and Signals.